Hello and welcome to another video. Today we have the Helio LSO5, which is also called Helio Solar. It's a simple but stylish looking smartwatch with heart rate monitoring. It's got a touch display and it can track activities by using a smartphone's GPS. The box looks like most Helio products with a picture on the front and some specifications on the back. Inside we have the watch itself and this is a round style watch. We get a user manual that describes the basic use and how to set it up. The charger is the same magnetic type that we get with many other budget watches and it's the same as comes with the Halo LSO2. It also came with a set of extra bands in blue color and a screen protector. The watch itself is 45 by 11 mm and weighs only 54 grams. It's got a 340 mAh battery that can last as long as 30 days if everything is switched off or 15 days with heart rate monitoring. For connectivity we have Bluetooth 5. The color of this watch is something between dark grey and black and I think the way it reflects light looks very nice. The only button on it is on the side here and it's mainly used to turn on the screen but it also works as a back button. On the back we have the heart rate sensor and there is of course also an accelerometer inside for counting steps. The two silver colored circles are for charging so all we need to do is attach the magnet here and we should see the charge progress on the screen. If you don't like the black bands, they are quite easy to take off with the quick release pins. It's not the prettiest bands I've seen, but they look okay. They're also soft and flexible, so they are comfortable to wear. On the side we have a small button, so let's try turning it off. As you can see, we don't really have to search for the app at all, as we can just scan the QR code on the watch. This will take us to a website where we can choose our operating system, and finally go to Google Play. The app is called Halo Fit, so it's not the same app that's used with the Halo LSO2 watch. Now install the app and open it. If you already have an account, you can just log in and start pairing the watch. Select it in the app and tap the red button on the watch. I'm not sure why the button is red though, as it feels more logic to use a green color here. That's it, the time is synced and we can now start using the watch. The screen will automatically turn on when we raise the wrist, so there's no need to push any buttons. The Helio Solar looks much better than LSO2 in my opinion, as it has a more classy style and the case is made of alloy instead of plastic. I said it before, but I also think it's a very nice looking color. The display is vibrant and quite bright, so I never used it at max brightness. It's a 1.28 inch TFT touch display with a resolution of 240 by 240 pixels, so it looks quite good. For water resistance we have IP68 rating, which means it's for daily use only. Like rain and washing hands. But it's not for swimming. Even though it's probably not recommended, I used it in the shower every day. And it's still working fine. One small thing that bothers me a bit is that the bands do collect dust easily. It's easy to wash off with water, but as you can see here it doesn't look very nice. On the main screen we have the time, date, heart rate, steps, calories, distance and weather. But if you don't like the watch face, it can be changed by holding on it. The next watch face is digital with a bit less details. Here's one with analog style. There is a black edge around the display, so it doesn't go all the way to the edge. But because of the good black levels, it's not very visible when using watch faces with a black background. Swiping down we find the quick toggles. We have find phone, D&D, brightness controls. The display is quite bright so I didn't use it at more than 75%. The gear takes us to the settings and it's possible to change the watch face and brightness from here as well. Although it's easier to do it from the home screen or from the quick toggles. In about we have the software and firmware version and the MAC address. At last we have a power off and a reset function. Going back to the home screen and swiping from the left takes us to the breathing exercise, where we can only choose between 1 and 2 minutes, and it's a simple exercise where you sit still and just follow the instructions on the screen. The animation and text shows us when to breathe in and out. The weather page shows us the current weather and for the next 3 days, with lowest and highest temperatures. There's no detailed view of the days, so this is all we get. Next is the sleep monitoring results for the last night, there's light sleep, deep sleep and total sleep with a graph around it. We can only see last night's results as there's no history available on the watch. Heart rate monitoring works well and shows us the last reading with a graph around it and the highest and lowest value at the bottom. 
I like the look of the activity screen, with the three graphs going around, and in the center we have steps, distance, and calories. Sadly, we can only see today's data, so if you want to see any history, you have to open the app on the phone. Swiping up takes us to the menu items, and the first two are exactly the same as we saw when swiping from the left on the watch face. Sport is where we go to start an activity, and we have 12 to choose from. There's jogging, fast walking, biking, climbing, spinning, yoga, indoor running, integrated training, gymnastics, basketball, football, and rowing. When selecting one, we first get the standard 3 seconds to get ready. While it is active, we can see time spent, heart rate, and distance on the first screen. Tab 1s will show pace, steps, and calories. The watch doesn't have a GPS, but you can start activities from the app to get GPS tracking. Swiping to the right will put activity on pause and gives us the option to resume or finish it. Below sport, we have the same weather screen as we saw before. Sleep is also the same as we saw before. One of my most used functions on this watch is notifications. It's very nice to quickly see what's going on without taking out the phone. A text notification looks like this, and the only thing that's not very convenient is that I can't read the whole message. If it's longer than what's on the screen right now, you'll have to read it on the phone. At least I can see if it's something important or something that can wait till later. For incoming calls, we can see the name of the person calling, but there's no option to mute the call. The only option is to reject it, which is a bit annoying. Especially if the phone has a loud ringtone, as it will keep ringing until the caller hangs up. The music settings is a remote control that gives us the option to play, pause and skip songs. It works well, but I wish it would also show the name of the song that's playing, but sadly it doesn't have this option. There's also no option to adjust the volume. In the more section we first have a simple stopwatch, and the only option here is to start stop and reset it. It does not support lapse. The countdown timer has a few presets, and a plus icon to set it manually. Find phone will play a ringtone on the phone to help you find it. Breathe training is the same as we saw before. Many of the functions are repeated in different places on the watch, which is a little bit unnecessary in my opinion, but it is what it is. The whole settings menu we have here is the exact same as we saw earlier. I think I covered everything that's available on the watch, so let's move over to the app. It's a simple app, but it's easy to use and it looks okay. On the main screen we have today's activity data, with target, steps, distance and heart rate. Next is the heart rate data with a nice graph, and under is sleep data for the last night. For a more detailed view, we can open them and get a nice view of the day. To jump between the different days, we can use the arrows at the top here. So we have the graph and a list below with the different activities that are automatically recorded during the day. To see activities that we start ourselves, we have to go into other resources. And here we can see details like distance, steps, time, calories, the minimum, average and maximum heart rate. We also get a detailed view of the heart rate by swiping to the left. Going back to the heart rate details, we have a nice graph at the top, some average, minimum and maximum data. And at the bottom we have a heart rate ranges. It's basically the same as other brands call heart rate zones. In sleep data we have the usual data like deep sleep, light sleep and awake time, with a nice graph on top. At the bottom is a short comment based on the results, and as you can see here, I apparently go to sleep too late. If you need GPS on your activities, it is possible to start them on the phone here. In device we have all the settings for the watch, and at the top we can see the remaining battery. Heart rate monitoring can be switched on or off here. Call reminder needs to be on if you want notifications for incoming calls. App Reminders lets us choose which apps we want notifications from. There's also sedentary reminders, which I personally never use. Alarms must be set here, since it's not possible to do it directly on the phone. The Halo Solar has a good vibration alarm, so I had no problems using this as my main alarm in the morning. We can switch on or off automatic display. To avoid getting alerts in the middle of the night, we can set a D&D mode in here. In universal settings, it's possible to switch on or off SMS reminders. We can choose how long the display should stay on each time it's activated. And we can switch between 12 and 24 hour time formats. At last, we have a firmware upgrade and clear data, which obviously deletes all our data. 
The me section lets us set a daily target for steps and helps us with the necessary permissions to get the watch working the way it's supposed to. And that should cover almost everything we can do in the app. Even though the Haley Solar is a budget watch, it looks very nice. The display is good with nice vibrant colors and it's more than bright enough. It's also comfortable to wear for longer periods and even at night while sleeping. The menu system is smooth enough and seems to be a bit smoother than the Halo Solar Mini or LSO2. It's still a bit laggy in the main menu, but at least it's a bit better. Even though the battery can last up to 30 days with everything switched off, I don't think that's how people will use this watch. I used it for a full week with everything on and I still had 67% left, so it seems to have quite good battery life. It should last up to 2 weeks with everything on, but of course it depends on how much you use the different functions. Since the watch itself doesn't have a GPS, the activity data we get when using only the watch is a bit limited, but it does what it's supposed to in a good way, and it's possible to use the phone's GPS when needed. Some minuses are the bands that collect dust a bit easily, the laggy main menu, and it would be nice to be able to read longer notifications without having to use the phone. And that's it for my review, please comment, subscribe and click that bell below the video for more. Have a nice day and see you in the next video. Bye bye.